Hi everyone, this is Ming Yao from Singularity Engineering and in this video we'll look at how to do a trace mapping on a shell, multi-layer shell body. So this is a new capability in ISIS. I haven't put a video together before and I think it could be really helpful for a lot of instances. So we're going to start with a static structural analysis. Let's go ahead and bring in a new space claim geometry. Okay, ANSYS will read in any uh, ODB++ or IPC formatted generic uh, CAD layout. We can also read in EDB files, ANSYS uh, Electronics Database, so uh, the ANSYS Electronic Desktop project files. In this case, I'm going to read in ODB, but you can, um, the, the ANSYS Electronic Desktop can read in a wide range of formats, so it's typically very convenient. Okay. Oh, I think I accidentally closed it. Okay, let's try that again. Uh, we're only importing the layers to create the layers of the PCB. Okay, so that looks good. <clears throat> Delete the components. Uh, in this model, I was making some uh, packages and bumps. But what we really need, just need in this case, is just the surface. So I've done videos before where I've mapped the trace layers, layer by layer, onto this PCB. And for each layer, we have we calculate for each element in each layer how much copper versus FR4 there is that that layer. We heat up the the entire structure, look at the warpage. But here, I'm only going to take that surface. And that's all we're going to need. So that's the bottom surface. Then I'm going to grab my ODB file and uh, put in some external data here. So my external data will be a generic demonstration model that I use. This is an open source Coleman PCB. And because it's, it's uh, because I created the CAD model from the same OD, ODB++ file, I know that it will be lined up. So that's all I need to do for this. We're going to link link up the two and do an update. This will take the material information. The it will generate a file to send over to the simulation with a trace layout. So the trace layout allows us to map the distribution of copper on the PCB and in this case uh, very quickly calculate the uh, material, the warpage of the entire uh, PCB. This applies to the PCB's uh, substrate silicons. A lot of uh, semiconductor processing equipment have deposition of, uh, of material layer by layer. So you, we could use a lot of the, these technologies, the same technique to do that. So you can see that we have, this is a standard mechanical database. We're going to start out by just putting in some numbers for the thickness. It doesn't really matter what it is. We're going to, going to overwrite that later. I'm going to import the traces onto this. And we'll pick the traces, file one. So this is now goes through a calculation to 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 read in the the trace mapping information all right so we got the model uh, trace model imported let's uh, set the offset type to uh, bottom because we specified the bottom face Similarly, for this import, uh, the offset is bottom as well. Okay, and then we can select the trace material. We need to import some additional material, so I'm going, going to get uh, FR4. There's my FR4. 
We'll add that in there and copper. Uh, we should use this copper alloy. Hit the plus sign. So now we should be able to go to our imported traces. Uh, the trace material will be copper alloy for all of my layers. And the dielectric material here will be my FR4. I'm doing the control C, highlight everything, control V. Let's copy this copper over here too. Um, okay. Control C, control V. So that is all assigned for my trace import. And um, I think that's all I have to do here. So we do want to assign a mesh. Usually the, the general mesh is gonna be a little bit coarse here. Okay, so let's uh, put a sizing of, uh, let's see what two millimeters look like on this model. Not bad. Okay, we'll, we'll go with that for now. We'll do an import trace. All right, so we've imported the, all of the layers and we can check out each of, the, each of the layers here. So you can see how much dielectric with the copper distribution is on each one of these layers. Okay, you can see some of the traces here and there. Um, so that's pretty much it for setting up the simulation. Let's uh, go ahead and do some thermal condition. Let's heat it up to 100 degrees. And uh, we, I just grab, you just usually probably should, uh, should put an actual vertex down or something, but we're going to just do a fixed support so this thing doesn't run around. Uh, turn on weak springs. And let's take a look. see how this part deforms and you exaggerate it a little bit more. You see it's not uniform deformation. There's some uh, differences in the in the distribution of all the different materials in this uh, in this in this shell. Um, I think for stress and strain we can look at uh, entire section or one specific layer to see what kind of stress and strains there are on different layers. Uh, another nice thing about this is that you can adjust the thickness. So if you think that uh, you know you want to change up the thickness of some of these layers, I can just numerically change some of, some of these values and run the simulation again. So right now we got a deformation of 0.1 millimeters. Let's see what happens when we uh, zero out a couple of the layers. Okay, 0. Uh, 0 0.15 now instead of 0 0.1. So by suppressing a few layers, it seems to have increased the amount of deformation. So that's a quick video to show you how you can use trace mapping on a single shell model and get the deformations of, of, the, uh, of the board or substrate or whatever thin sheet metal, thin sheet layers you're creating here. So thank you again for taking the time to watch this video. Please uh, subscribe to us on YouTube and if you're interested, visit us at www.singularityeng.com. Have a good day. Bye-bye.